Uh, I'm Jiyong from Cornell University, uh, and I'm going to talk about our system, Gecko, uh, that is oblivious to contention inside virtualized cloud environment. This work is done in collaboration with Mahesh Balakrishnan from Microsoft Research, Tudor Marion from Google, and my advisor, Hakeem Weatherspoon. So these days, more and more applications are moving towards the cloud. And inside the server, uh, there are more and more virtual machines being located together uh, because of the advancement of many core technologies. So if you look inside a single server, uh, each virtual machine uh, may have its own physical um, resource, own virtual resources, uh, assuming that it owns its own position. So however, unlike the CPU and memory inside these servers, um, physical disks are rather poorly virtualized. So for example, if all the guest virtual machines inside these machines issue sequential requests, assuming that it will get maximum throughput out of its virtual disks, that, is, that won't happen because uh, inside the virtualization layer, these sequential requests will be mixed, and what the physical disk actually sees is a random mix of these sequential streams. So to illustrate how uh, increased virtualization uh, can affect the disk throughput, we ran a simple experiment on top of four disk RAID 0 configuration. We increased the number of concurrent uh, virtual machines which are issuing sequential writes and measured the disk throughput. And this plot shows that as we increase the number of concurrent uh, writers, the throughput falls below half. And what can be even worse is if there is a single virtual machine that is issuing random I.O., then all overall the throughput falls through the bottom. So the I.O. contention inside virtual machines or among virtual machines can cause the overall throughput to collapse. To rephrase this, if there is a single virtual machine that is issuing random I.O., all the other virtual machines, even if they are issuing sequential requests, they will suffer from bad disk throughput. Then, hasn't there been any solution to minimize or reduce such contentions? Um, there have been I.O. scheduling, which reorders I.O. requests to reduce some of the contentions. And then there have been workload placement, which separates some of the misbehaving workloads from the well-behaving ones. I.O. scheduling, however, may increase the latency of I.O.s, and even if we reschedule these requests, still the disks may go through a seeking process, which may collapse the performance again. Workload placement typically requires a profiling of the application, and these profiling techniques may not always work, and such placement well, may also limit some of the freedoms of placing virtual machines inside your cloud. Then what about log structure file system? Log structure file system has been studied for decades, and it is well known that uh, regardless of how many different write streams that comes in, log structure file system will merge them and make it as a single sequential stream. In this case, we can get the maximum throughput out of a single disk. Then does this solve the problem? Uh, the answer is no. It is well known that the Achilles heel of log structure file system comes from the garbage collection. Throughout the talk, I'm going to name the beginning of this log as a log head, and then the end of log as a log tail, where the data is being appended. So when garbage collection is triggered, typically garbage collection read happens from the head of the log, and then compact the data at the tail of the log. So garbage collection reads will make the disk head to move from the log head to the tail, and then again uh, collapsing the performance of a single disk. The original log structure file system literature doesn't talk much about the read operation coming from the application, but in fact, also application reads can also disrupt some of the uh, sequentiality of writes. Considering multiple disks inside modern servers, um, one may think of raiding multiple disks and then running log structure file system on top of it, but like I so showed you earlier, raiding doesn't help solving this problem. And also to see how a log structure file system performs under garbage collection, we again ran a simple experiment. We ran the logging scheme on top of two disk uh, raid zero setting and then ran write only workload. In this case, when there is no garbage collection, then we can get maximum throughput out of two disks, which is above 200 megabytes per second. But once garbage collection is 
triggered, then the throughput collapses and the application throughput falls below 10x. So to summarize what I've said so far, increased virtualization leads to increased disk seeks and this can kill the performance. However, as I showed you, the RAID configuration or log structure file system or the com combination of the two cannot absolutely solve this problem. So throughout the talk, I'm going to introduce our system, Gecko, uh, which solves most of the IO contention problems inside virtualized cloud and show you the evaluation and conclude the talk. Before I jump into the design of our system, I want to enumerate what is IO contention and what causes this seeks. So IO contention is the case when there are multiple VMs or instances that are trying to access a shared disk. For example, if two virtual machines issues write to the different location of a disk, this makes the disk head to seek. We call this write-write contention. And similarly, if different instances try to write to a different location in a disk, this is called read-read contention. And then similarly, write versus read is called write-read contention. Like I said earlier, a log structure file system effectively solves write versus write contention. However, it again introduces a new type of contention, which is garbage collection versus write and garbage collection versus read, where each of all the operations tries to access different positions inside the disk. So our design principle behind Gecko is that rather than having multiple disks that are seeking under these contention, having a single sequentially accessing disk may actually perform better. So to achieve such uh, characteristic, uh, we design Gecko in a chain logging design. A chain logging design is if we have multiple disks, we log to one disk at a time in a sequence. So for example, here, we start logging the data to disk zero, and then once disk zero is full, we move our log tail to disk one, and then continue logging. Once disk one is full, then we move on to disk two, and then continue on. Because we are borrowing the idea of logging, we get uh, right versus right, we get, uh, we are free from the right versus right contention. And again, because we are writing to one disk at a time, only one disk is serving the writes and all the rest are serving reads. That means we're getting relatively less right versus read contention. Now, uh, considering the garbage collection, we need to read the data from the head of the log, which is currently at disk zero, and then we'll have to compact the data at disk two. In this case, because garbage collection read and the writes are completely on a different disk, we're resolving uh, garbage collection read versus write contention. So the basic idea behind our gecko is by separating the log tail from the body, uh, we're getting better performance. This is similar to how a animal, Gecko is cutting his tail and moving fast, so that's why we call our system Gecko. However, in this garbage collection scheme that I just showed you, um, the tail drive, or where the writes are being appended, must share its throughput with the garbage collection writes and the application writes. Um, maybe we can get better, we can provide better throughput for the application by doing a smarter cleaning. For example, instead of compacting the data in the tail drive, we can think of a way of compacting the data inside the body of the log. We call this compact in body garbage collection. However, uh, throughout this talk, I'm not going to go into the details of this garbage collection scheme. So we effectively solve garbage collection versus write contention. However, then what happens if read tries to access the disk that is accepting the writes? Revisiting the log structure file system paper, um, the paper uh, uses or assumes RAM to observe most of the reads. However, in our design, because we are writing to only one disk, we can just focus on the tail drive that is accepting the writes. So we want to put a cache on top of the tail drive. Then the problem is that if we want to place, if we want to assert all the reads from touching this tail drive, we may need a very large amount of RAM, which may cost a lot. So instead, because these days flash drives are very cheap, we place a cheap MLC flash to observe some of the reads coming through the tail drive. 
However, we still need to maintain the RAM side by side with SSD because if we use SSD as a cache, then the lifetime of SSD may be very short. By placing the RAM, the RAM will um, take care of most of the hot data and then uh, the SSD will take care of relatively warm data. I'm going to show you how effective our uh, cache is and how the lifetime of the SSD underneath is during the evaluation. Again, inside the body of the chain, there can be some read versus read contention. So to minimize some read versus read contention, we also place a small flash to observe some of the read contention going inside the disks. So to summarize some of our Gecko system properties, we're using chain logging scheme, um, which resolves write versus write contention and which reduces read versus write contention. Considering multiple disks inside modern servers, we can think of mirroring or even striping these chains. In this case, we can achieve higher fault tolerance, at the same time, higher read performance. One nice thing about chain logging is that we achieve power saving almost for free. For example, we can turn off the zero prime and one prime without worrying about any consistency issues at all because all the updates are going to the tail drive. Finally, the, by using the caching scheme that I explained just before, we can reduce the write versus read contention and read versus read contention inside the disks. So let me briefly talk about some of the implementation details of our Gecko system. So this is the similar chain that we have, and uh, inside this physical disk, there are physical address space uh, filled with data. There is a log head and log tail, and there may be some valid and invalid data that has been updated in between this log. So we need some kind of mapping to find most up-to-date data, and to do this, we maintain a logical to physical mapping inside the memory. Such mapping entries can be as small as four bytes. And so to support about eight terabytes of storage, uh, we need about eight gigabytes of RAM, which we think is reasonable. However, because this metadata structure is maintained in memory, if power goes out, we'll lose all the data. So for persistent, we maintain an additional data structure inside persistent flash. Rather than storing the logical to physical mapping, which may be updated in a random fashion, we rather maintain the physical to logical, which is the inverse map, inside Flash. This physical to logical mapping is updated in a strictly sequential order, same as the log is written. So in this case, we can get better performance out of Flash, and this sequentially writing pattern can do good to the lifetime of the Flash that we're storing the metadata. The amount of uh, flash that we need is similar to the amount of uh, metadata that we keep in the memory. So I'm going to walk you through some of the read and write operation using this uh, metadata structure. So if you want to read the data from our Gecko system, we just simply consult the logical to physical mapping and then find the physical location to retrieve the data. When we want to write the data, we look at the logical to physical mapping, look at the next tail location, write the data, and then uh, we prepare a physical to logical mapping inside the memory. We may want to write some more data, and then also prepare the physical to logical mapping. Because these physical to logical mapping entries are small, we may want to cache them until a certain amount of these mapping entries are gathered, and then flush it to the flash. Now the data is persistent. So far, I've explained the design of Gecko and some of the implementation details. I'm going to move on to the evaluation of our system. Throughout the evaluation, I'm going to show you how our system Gecko performs under garbage collection, under real workloads, and talk about um, what it means to increase or decrease the number of disks inside the Gecko chain. Finally, I'm going to show you how effective our tail caching scheme is and show you the durability of SSD inside our tail cache. For evaluation, uh, we prepared two versions of implementation for Gecko. First is the in-kernel version, uh, which is designed as a block device or a kernel module. Uh, this uh, implements some of the basic uh, chain logging scheme uh, as well as garbage collection. 
The user level emulator is capable of rerunning the workload traces uh, in the Gecko system. In terms of hardware, we use a 600 gigabytes a hard disk drive, uh, a SATA drive, um, that is 10K RPM. And for the cache, we used uh, Intel MLC flash. So then how does Gecko perform under garbage collection? This plot is the one that I showed you earlier to motivate our work, uh, running two disks, write-only workload um, on top of RAID 0 plus log. Our Gecko performance uh, looks like the one on your <coughs> left. So because Gecko is logging to one disk at a time, when there is only write-only workload, Gecko will get uh, the maximum throughput out of a single disk, which is above 100 megabyte per second, uh, whereas log plus RAID 0 gets the double. However, when the garbage collection is triggered, the performance of log plus RAID 0 collapses, whereas Gecko can maintain the maximum aggregate throughput. Overall, Gecko maintains about uh, three times higher aggregate throughput and about four times higher application throughput in this scenario. The garbage collection scheme that we're using here is the one that I introduced earlier, where the garbage collection write must share the bandwidth with the application write. By using the smarter cleaning scheme I told, told you earlier, we can actually um, increase the application throughput. So the first two bar here are the cases with no, no garbage collection and using the garbage collection scheme sharing the bandwidth with the application. If we can compact the data inside the chain of the log, we can increase the throughput of the application to have always the maximum throughput of a single drive. Now I'm going to show you uh, the Gecko performance under uh, real workload traces. The workload traces that we used are MS Enterprise and MSR Cambridge traces, uh, which was also analyzed in the earlier talks on uh, Wednesday. To mimic the virtualized environment, we use a mix of eight of these workloads. So each workload may uh, represent a single virtual machine uh, issuing I.O. requests to our disk storage system. In this experiment, we use six disks. Gecko uses uh, three disk chains that is mirrored. And we ran log structure uh, on top of RAID 1.0 configuration. The amount of uh, the cache that we used is uh, 32 gigabyte SSD for the tail cache and body cache for Gecko, and 64 gigabytes of SSD for the logging scheme. As you can see in these fi two figures, uh, we can see that Gecko achieves two to three times uh, higher throughput overall. This is because Gecko has a single uncontended tail drive that can always achieve higher write throughput. And at the same time, because the write operations and read operations are kind of isolated in different drives, Gecko can achieve higher read throughput as well. Now, then, what are the effects of varying the Gecko's chain lengths? This plot shows you the case uh, of running the same workload uh, on top of our systems, uh, varying the number of disks from two to seven. The darker color bar represents the performance from the log plus rate zero setting, also varying the disk number from two to seven. One thing that we can notice is that even if the log plus rate zero configuration is using seven disks, it underperforms uh, compared to the Gecko configuration using a uh, disk of two. So overall, this shows that uh, our design principle that having a single uncontended disk can actually get better performance compared to having a multiple contended disk. And also separating read and write operation inside the disk can lead to better performance. Throughout the talk, I didn't talk much about uh, pure RAID configuration, uh, but I just want to say that uh, in this mixed uh, random I.O. workloads, uh, regardless of the number of disks, the RAID zero's performance was around 10 megabyte per second round. So the reason, one of the reasons that the Gecko can achieve such high performance was because of the read cache, the tail cache that blocks most of the read operations from touching the uh, tail drive. So uh, to evaluate the effectiveness of this tail cache, um, 
we ran an uh, analysis uh, using 21 combinations of four to eight uh, Microsoft Cambridge and Enterprise traces. So the plot you're seeing here is the uh, read head rate inside the tail cache while we are filling the 500 gigabyte disk. Because we're caching only the recent data, we get a pretty high read hit rate, which is at least 86% hit rate. The blue bar shows the hit rate inside the RAM, and the red bar shows the hit rate inside the SSD. And you can see that RAM pretty aggressively um, caches the read. That means uh, RAM is, we can infer from this that RAM can actually extend the lifetime of SSD pretty well. And of course, depending on the amount of data inside the disk, the cache hit rate may vary. This plot shows uh, the amount of data that is stored inside the disk in the access case, and then shows the read hit rate in the y-axis. You can see that as the amount of data inside the disk increases, the read hit rate goes down. However, still we get about average 80 plus percent read hit rate. That means uh, tail cache can pretty uh, well block the reads from touching the tail drive. Based on this uh, read cache hit rate, uh, we did an analysis of the SSD lifetime inside our tail cache. So assuming that our 32 gigabyte SSD is uh, accepting IOs at a 40 megabyte per second rate, then the SSD will wear out within about three months. However, if we plug in just the two gigabytes of RAM, and if we plug in the IO pattern that was observed in the workload traces, then the overall lifetime of these uh, workload mixes can uh, run on SSD for two to eight times longer. So, so far I've shown you uh, the design of our Gecko and the performance of our Gecko system and how our caching system works. So to conclude my talk, Gecko enables a fast storage system inside the virtualized cloud and our Gecko system scales with virtualization uh, where multiple VMs work together. Uh, I've shown you that our design principle, having a single uncontended disk can perform better than more multiple contended disk and also separating reads and writes can result in better performance. And Gecko achieves this feature by separating the log, uh, tail of the log from the body of the log and aggressively caching the tail drive. Thank you, that's all I have, and I'll take questions. I am Lakshmi Bhairav Sundaram, NetApp Advanced Technology. Um, so, you had looked at experiments with um, RAID 1.0 setup mm -hmm. with uh, uh, Gecko. Did you look at setups where it was RAID 6 instead of RAID 1 or RAID 5? Um, no, we haven't tested that. Uh, but I think in terms of the, so RAID 1.0 is more focused on the throughput. So yeah, we only focus on RAID 1.0 configuration here. Uh, the reason I'm asking is with RAID 5 or RAID 6, um, you will end up with too many small writes oh. if you were not using the uh, log part appropriately, and so I was wondering if it has some effects. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Dan Peek, Facebook. So I, I think this is pretty cool work. Uh, I just had a quick question about the SSD replacement versus RAM. So it seems like you're, the, the SSD lifetime you were showing was pretty short, on the order of a year or so, but only two gigabytes of RAM. But RAM is really cheap, so where does this break-even cost come with, S with choosing the size of SSD, SSD lifetime and replacement cost versus the amount of RAM you could add for that same cost? Um, so I guess in terms of cost, it may really depend on how much budget you have to configure the system. But I can tell you that um, the amount of SSD where, that we're using is only 32 gigabytes, so that's pretty small. So if you want to increase the, the replacement cycle, you can rather want to use a larger SSD. For example, if you use like four, 128 gigabytes of SSD, then you're essentially getting like four times lifetime extension out of it. Uh, Jonathan Amit from IBM. I have a question regarding the garbage collection. 
did you test the system over time when data was overwritten a lot of the time and you saw the effect of the garbage collection over the ability to use a tail drive? Oh, can you restate the last part? Over time? That over time, did you test the garbage collection when data was, is overwritten again and again, which cause uh, fragmentation inside the journal? Um, so, uh, in terms of uh, real benchmark, uh, we didn't do a very uh, thorough study of garbage collection, but uh, in, using synthetic workloads, we did test uh, different garbage collection patterns uh, where a lot of data is fragmented and when like all the data must be relocated and compacted. Uh, and for both cases, um, I think uh, Gecko did a pretty good job as supposed. So we got a similar performance to what we've showed you in the garbage collection evaluation graphs. Thank you. Hi, this is Amrinder Singh Randhawa from EMC BRS. Uh, so uh, can you also tell us about the read-read contention uh, which might happen on the first drive because of random reads? Uh, where the GC was running, where garbage, when you are doing the garbage collection, yes. uh, the reads could happen to that drive. Yes, so that remains uh, as some of our future work. So we did put a, like a body cache on top of the uh, body of the log to reduce read versus read contention, but the read hit rate that we get from those SSDs weren't as high as we expected. Although we get a better read performance compared to RAID 0 uh, plus uh, log, logging scheme, um, the read versus read contention or read versus garbage collection read is uh, still a problem that we need to solve. Do you have any numbers for that? Um, I, can't, uh, I don't have the numbers with me right now, but I can look up and talk That's offline. Fine. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for it.